Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, March 20th, 2022. Uh, this is Deacon Barry Taylor, and I will be your presenter today. Uh, we are still in Unit 1 uh, for the spring quarter, which is entitled Liberating Passover. Liberating Passover. Lesson 3. We're in Lesson 3 of the quarter. Uh, from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is The Celebration of Completion. Devotional reading comes from Ezra chapter 3, verses 10 to 13. Our background scripture comes from Ezra chapter 6, verses 13 to 22, and from Leviticus chapter 23, verses 4 to 8. Our printed passage is Ezra chapter 6, verse 13 to 22. Our key verse from the King James Version is the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of the house of God with joy. That is Ezra chapter 16, verse, uh, chapter 6 rather, verse 16. Our lesson aims from the quarterly or number one, explore the celebration prompted by the completion of the new temple. Number two, identify reasons to celebrate God's goodness. And number three, join together as believers in celebrating and sharing the good news of God's love. Amen, amen, amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for uh, another opportunity to study your precious word. Lord, we pray that you would give us a clear understanding, Lord, of all that you would have us to understand of this historical narrative. Lord, uh, help us to uh, realize uh, the providence, Lord, uh, that you uh, showed in moving the hearts of the kings of Persia, Lord, to make provisions for the rebuilding of your temple and to recognize to the extent we can, Lord, all the provisions you make in our lives, Lord seen and unseen lord lord help us to experience joy in our salvation the joy lord that you will provide for all of our needs according to your riches and glory by christ jesus and lord as we understand your word help us to see you more clearly and help our and increase our faith lord and as our faith is increased increase our obedience to your word in jesus name we pray amen uh, after the introduction, uh, our lesson has two major divisions. The first is entitled, Finishing with Joy. And that's covered between Ezra chapter 6, verse 13 and 17. The second is, Finishing with Joy. And that's covered between Ezra 6, 18 and 22. From the Standard Commentary, we have a similar title. Our lesson title is Free to Celebrate. And additional aims are, number one, state the emotion that characterized the celebration of Passover and unleavened bread. Number two, compare and contrast the dedication of the second temple with that of the first. And then number Three, suggest and help plan a church-wide celebration to commemorate an occasion of God's provision and faithfulness. And we do remember such a celebration we had a few years back. In fact, it was September 2014 after we finished the restoration of our sanctuary. After a uh, failure of our ceiling, a collapse of a large portion of our ceiling, which could have resulted in several fatalities had it happened on Sunday morning or early afternoon. We praise God that it didn't. And we praise God for him blessing us with the resources, his resources, to fully restore the sanctuary. In the way of a background or context, our lesson today continues the narrative of Ezra, uh, we can go back to the beginning of the chapter and see between verses 1 to 12. And we see how, um, and, and actually even beyond back into the chapter 5, the settled Jewish uh, exiles under 
uh, Zerubbabel's leadership rebuilt the foundation of Jerusalem, of the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, at, go back to Ezra 3 and 8. Uh, after the work began, Persian officials uh, questioned the authority whose authority uh, they were rebuilding under. And so the question was raised to, um, at the time, King Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes uh, stopped the work uh, and actually uh, it was suspended for some 15 years. Uh, at <clears throat> Under the leadership of Haggai and Zechariah, however, the, uh, the those who had been of the cap, those of, had to return from captivity, began to work on the temple again, and the question was raised again by uh, the surrounding authorities. Uh, the question was brought to Darius, now king, and Darius did a search, a diligent search of the records to see uh, whether, as the Jewish leaders uh, uh, said, the authority came from Cyrus the king and he actually found uh, the edict or the order by Cyrus that the uh, Jews were to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple and he made provisions for them to do so also providing with them with all the gold and the silver vessels uh, and instruments that were taken out of the temple by Nebuchadnezzar uh, and he further said that not only will you allow, this is Darius now, uh, the uh, Jewish leaders of the Jewish people to rebuild this temple, but you will provide them the funds, you will provide them all the materials that they need to do this and everything they need to worship thereafter. And so <clears throat> those who, and as we get into the lesson, will uh, uh, be on the tail end of uh, uh, actually the response, if you will. In fact, Maybe we want to go back and just read a little bit of Darius's letter uh, to Tatnai, uh, the governor of the region, and Sithar Boznai. Uh, they were the leaders, if you will, of that area, and basically were responsible for collecting taxes and sending a portion to the king. So between verses 3 and 5, uh, Darius just reiterates King Cyrus's decree, okay, concerning the house of the God of Jerusalem. He said, "Let that let the house be rebuilt, the place where they are offer where where they offered sacrifice, and let the foundation be firmly laid, and so forth." And he gives the dimensions of the house and all. Skipping down to verse six, now then Darius adds. He says, now therefore, Tatnai, governor of the region beyond the river, that's the river Euphrates, and Shethar Boznai, Shethar Boznai, and your companions, and the Persians who are beyond the river, keep yourselves far from there. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God on the site. Verse 8, moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders, for these Jews, uh, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from taxes. These are the taxes they were collecting from the region on the region beyond the river. This is the given, <clears throat> this is to be given rather immediately to these men so that they are not hindered and whatever they need young bulls, rams, and lambs for the burnt offering of God, of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail, that they may offer sacrifices, sweet aroma, to the God of heaven, and pray for the life of the king and his sons. And then he goes on uh, in verse, <laughs> verses 11 and 12 and warns them sternly also i issue a decree that whoever alters this edict let a timber be pulled from his house and erect it and let him be hanged on it and let his house be made a refuge heap because of this and 
and may the God who causes him his name rather to dwell there destroy any king or people who put their hand to alter it or to destroy this house of God which is in Jerusalem I Darius issue a decree let it be done diligently so that was the letter responding to the question from Tatnai uh, the governor of that region as to what authority uh, the Jews had to rebuild the temple at Jerusalem. So we're going to have a brief word of prayer. We'll get into it. We'll pick up with verse 13 uh, and with uh, the response from Tatnai and Shethnar Bozni. Father, we do thank and praise you again, Lord, for uh, another opportunity to study your precious word. We thank you, Lord, for your abundant blessings, Lord, for your many seen and unseen blessings day by day. And Lord, we thank you for this um, uh, record, Lord, of a time of celebration, Lord, because of your providence and because of and for your glory, Lord, uh, how you turned the heart of the kings, the, uh, uh, the, the pagan kings, Lord, to conform to your will, Lord, concerning your place of worship, your place of meeting the children of Israel. Lord, let us uh, learn from this, Lord, uh, that, uh, that again, you are provid you, you, you actually provide for all of our needs, Lord. Uh, and we just thank you, Lord, for all those things that you do, Lord, without our knowledge, Lord, that you, that you do to accomplish your will in us and through us, Lord. We pray for understanding of this lesson, Lord. We pray that, again, we would understand exactly what you would have us to and to, as we understand, as always, your, your word, Lord. Increase our faith and our obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're going to look at the first passage from the quarterly uh, We'll read the entire passage and then we'll back up and have some verse by verse discussion. The first division of the quarterly again is entitled Finishing with Joy, uh, Ezra 6 13 to 17. And I'm going to read from the King James Version because there may be some words that we need to um, exposit. Uh, the NIV is a good translation, but it's it's thought for thought uh, and not word for word as the King James is. Not saying that the King James is better in all cases, and I and I really like the NIV and other versions that are more plain English. But beginning at thirteen, then Tapnai, governor on this side of the river, Sheth. Thor Bozni and their companions, according to that which Darius the king had sent, so they did speedily. So they did speedily. And uh, the NIV says they carried out with diligence. Okay. Uh, and the elders of the Jews built, built it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes king of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of Darius of, of the reign rather of Darius the king and the children of Israel the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of the house of God with joy and offered at the dedication of this house of God an hundred bullocks two hundred rams four hundred lambs and for a sin offering all Israel twelve for all Israel rather twelve he goats according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Okay, and I'm, we're going to back up now to verse 13, and I'm going to make a correction uh, because um, the NIV in many cases is 
word for word, um, but overall I think it's intended to be thought for thought. And I'm going to mention, um, well, let me just get on with it here. So again, it reads, then Tatnai governor on this side of the river. And of course that was the river Euphrates and he had been given authority uh, no doubt by the king or one of his underlings uh, to collect taxes and to govern that region. Uh, part B says Seth Tharbosni and their companions according to which that which Darius the king had sent. So they did speedily. Now this word from the Hebrew that's translated speedily uh, really means thoroughly with diligence, thoroughly with diligence. And as I mentioned, the NIV says diligently. It said it, they did it. Um, it said they did it with diligence. All right, so they were careful. Not, not only were they careful, but they were speedy, okay? They did not delay. Uh, the king was very uh, direct and on penalty of uh, whoever defied his decree being hung on a beam or a post from his house and his house being made a dunghill, they obeyed swiftly, okay? Verse 14. And the elders of the Jews build it. They prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. Um, now, this work, again, had originally begun uh, some 15 years ago um, in uh, 536 BC. We see that in Ezra chapter 3, verse 8. And the work was stopped because of the opposition, as we've mentioned. However, it began again the second year of Darius. And that's how they, they kept track of years there by the, the years of uh, the reign of the king the, the, who was an authority. And that being Darius, the first Darius. And that was 520 B.C. We see that in uh, chapter 4, verse 24. Now um, these are the re these are the elders who come back from exile. Okay, uh, they were the, the heads of the families or the heads of uh, 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 tribes, if you will, or large portions of the tribes, and uh, they led in the building. It's not to say that they did all the physical work, but they certainly led in the rebuilding of the temple. And as they did, they were inspired by the prophesying or preaching or exhortation of Haggai, uh, the prophet, and Zechariah. And we could, we could say a lot more about both of these men, uh, but suffice it to say, they were inspiring the people to do the work. Okay, the people had been uh, uninspired for some, as I said, 15, 16 years, 15 years. And they had built it their own homes, and they were beautiful and sealed, and and they had let uh, uh, they had stopped working on the temple after they laid the foundation and built the altar and made sacrifice the first sacrifice. Uh, then they were intimidated, and actually, the work stopped uh, because they didn't press it to find the the, the original decree from Cyrus. And Haggai didn't, I mean, they weren't just given one exhortation or one message. They did this for months and, and, and on end. And they, uh, Haggai in particular, appealed to the people uh, of Judah on the, on the basis of his concern with the glory of the temple and the actions of the priests, uh, how they were to perform the worship that God had uh required which they hadn't been able to do while they were in exile so he saw this as being something uh, a, a work that would bring glory to god as it as it certainly did and zechariah um, uh, also uh, warned 
that the people not make the mistakes that uh, they made in the past, which is why God drove them uh, out of the land or had them taken captivity. So they were, at, while they were encouraging and exhorting the temple to be built, they were also warning the people not to fall into the same types of sin, uh, idolatry, and those leaders, Tetnai and Shethar Bozni, they were idol worshipers, and they were idol worshipers around them, and they did not, uh, they needed to keep themselves separate from those people. 14b reads, and they built it and finished it according to the commandment. Actually, I, I read that. Sorry. Uh, so they 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 did it according, first of all, to the commandment of God. Uh, God had commanded them, but also uh, put in the hearts of these pagan kings uh, a uh, his direction, his command to them to allow the children of Israel to return to Jerusalem, build a temple, and to make all necessary provisions for that. Now we see that according to the command of God, the God of Israel, according to the command of Cyrus, we know about that, and that was prophesied by Isaiah years before, and Darius, um, uh, but then Artaxerxes, uh, the king of Persia, uh, we know that um, that name doesn't seem to be, seem to fit, because um, he was not he was one that actually stopped the work for a period, okay? But uh, it, all in all, I think it was intended to uh, show that the Pers all the Persian kings um, ultimately uh, supported, uh, to show their support for Jerusalem. Now, Darius, I'm sorry, Artaxerxes didn't, did not oppress, he did not... Uh, interfere with the Jews in any other way uh, so uh, his name was included to show the Persian the support of the Persian kings and I'm sure a lot more could be said about that moving on to verse 15 and this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar which is the sixth year of the reign of Darius so Darius gave the decree in his second year this is the sixth year, so somewhere between four and possibly five years, uh, uh, the temple was finished. All right, and uh, this would be the year 516 BC. Uh, that marked the sixth year of Darius, who came to power in 522. The month Adar. Uh, that marks the final month of the Jewish religious ca calendar. It's the month that corresponds with late February or early March. And it was 70 years after the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. Okay, it was that year set marked 70 years from the year that it was destroyed. Verse 16. And the children of Israel, the priests, and the Levites and the rest of the children of captivity kept the dedication of the house of God with joy. Okay, now um, the acts of dedication were central central throughout uh, the history of Israel, uh, and there were no greater dedications than those of uh, the temple, the first temple that Solomon. Uh, built and this uh, new temple. However, as you know from uh, First Kings chapter eight, uh, Solomon's dedication was much grander. Um, we're going to see uh, in, in terms of scale in just a few minutes, uh, but uh, it was important to dedicate, to consecrate this this place of meeting. Uh, the, the place that God would meet his children or his his uh, his people if you will uh and uh and and to and to bring glory to God in, in restoring that place uh after so many years again uh, the original temple had stood for some 360 70 years and had been it, it had been in ruin now for 70 years almost 70 years prior to the reconstruction of it all right so verse 17 says 
Let's look at 17a. It says, and offered at the dedication of the house of God an hundred bullocks or bulls, two hundred rams, and four hundred lambs. Now, you can't, you can't help but remember what was offered during the dedication of the original temple. Um, I mean, Solomon offered 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep and, and more. Just uh, that was him offering and the people offered as well. Um, and, uh, uh, and and there's there's probably a, a reason and they were offered for different types of sacrifices okay for the burnt offering for the trespass for the sin offering uh the lambs are offered uh for uh for for several purposes uh and 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 so they uh were doing what God had commanded them to do i don't know we don't know uh, how consistent they were in, in offering any kind of sacrifice when they're in captivity or if they did at all. But now they're getting uh, back to following the commandments of God and offering such as they had. And I think the reason, obviously, they did not uh, offer on the scale that Solomon did, they didn't have the reason. There weren't, certainly weren't nearly as many people in Jerusalem at that time. Solomon lived uh, during the zenith of Israel. David and Solomon lived at the most prosperous during the most prosperous time of Israel in its history, and so Solomon uh, had uh, uh, more wealth than anyone in the world. He could offer from his personal wealth, but the people uh, were more uh, uh, well off, if you will, and they could offer more substantial offerings as well. Uh, so. Let's move on to uh, 17b, which says, And for a sin offering for all Israel, 12 goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Now, the sin offering uh, of goats uh, purified the people from their sins or ritual violations. It was ceremonial, okay? Uh, purification of the people from their sins and we read about that in Leviticus chapter 4 verses 22 to 26 uh, chapter 5 verse 6 chapter 9 verse 3 and 15 uh, and of course the 12 uh, was significant because uh, it represented it represented the 12 tribes of Israel even though uh, Probably, perhaps very few of any of the ten tribes that were taken captive in the northern kingdom way back in 722 BC were still in that area, but there may have been some. But the, but they still, in, in the eyes of God and, and, and the people, had 12 tribes. God had established 12 tribes, descendants, descendants of Israel. And, uh, and we know that... Uh, they're spoken about through revelation so uh, they are wherever they are scattered in the world uh god's aware uh and uh so they are acknowledging that there are a, a uh a union of 12 tribes let's move on to now we're going to move into our next uh, division which is entitled, that division was again entitled Finishing with Joy. Now, but we didn't say much about the joy that they were experiencing in the process. It said that they finished the temple with joy and they were, uh, verse 16, and they were joyous uh, because, uh, first of all, of the accomplishment. Uh, you can imagine them being joyous because they were at home in the place that God had given them, had promised Abraham and had given them. And and uh, and many of them, of course, had never seen the land before, but they had heard so much about it. It was their homeland, even though they may have even been born uh, in exile uh, in Babylon. But it was a very joyous occasion in that 
they felt the delight of the Lord in what they were doing as they were bringing him glory. We know at the dedication of the original temple, uh, uh, the Lord showed his pleasure, uh, his delight in it by filling the temple with his glory in the form of a, a cloud, if you will, or smoke so that the priest could not minister and they had to come out. Uh, but so, and I, and I, and I have to tell you, there is, uh, there is perhaps, um, no joy greater than, uh, what you feel when you know you're doing the will of God and you know that he's pleased with what you're doing. Uh, you can take great joy in that when if that is, if you're his child and you want to do those things that please him, if he's certainly, if he's indwelt us as believers in Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit is jumping up and down in us when we do those things that are pleasing in our Father's sight. So let's uh, move into our next uh, division now, which is entitled Finishing, I'm sorry, Furnishing with Joy. Furnishing with Joy. Verse 18, uh, let me read the passage. Verse Beginning at verse 18 uh, through 22. And they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon uh, the fourteenth day of the first month. For the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of captivity and for the brethren and priests and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of, the, out of captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, again with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful and turned the hearts of the king of, of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Okay, let's back up to verse 18. Uh, which again reads, And they set the priests and the in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem as it is written in the book of Moses. Well, Moses declared, uh, God through him, that the priests would be of the tribe of Levi. The high priest would be a descendant of Aaron. And he prescribed the everything that they were to do in their service uh, to the people. And in the, in the tabernacle, when they were in the wilderness, in the temple uh, later on, and uh, even down to the clothing they were to wear and how they were to wash and purify themselves. And we can read about that uh, uh, in Exodus 29. We can read about it in Leviticus 8, Numbers 3, uh, 5 to 13 and 18. Now, um, the elders uh, had basically had the charge of reconstructing the temple. The priests uh, per perhaps had no involvement. They had not been even assigned or appointed at that point. But now that the, the, the temple is completed, uh, they need to make it functional. Okay, so they needed to have the priests and the Levites uh, according, and it says priests in their divisions. And we know... Moses set an order, but later David actually divided the priests by uh, by order and, and had them serve uh, certain uh, periods and certain functions. And we can read about that in First Chronicles 24. And uh, and so this is what they did. They not only appointed the priests, uh, but assigned them duties, assigned duties for the care of the temple to Levites. Okay, you can also look at Ezra chapter 2, verse 36 to 40. Um, verse 19 reads, 
And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. Now, this is separate from the dedication. Okay, this is some weeks after the dedication. Uh, they actually, at the appointed time, they kept the Passover. So this was uh, some five weeks after the dedication of the Passover. One of the commentators gives some uh, specific dates here. Uh, he's saying April 12th, 15, uh, 515 BC. Again, five works after the temple dedication, the people celebrate the Passover. Now, um, they had not perhaps done that uh, when they were in Babylon. Uh, this is one of the first things that they do. It's one of the most important celebrations or, uh, that the Lord uh, had commanded them to keep. And certainly uh, they remembered what it memorialized. It memorialized the death angel passing over the children of Israel when they were in bondage in Egypt because of the blood of the Passover lamb that they had put on their doorposts and lentils. And so this was a celebration that they, that the Lord decreed that they were to keep perpetually. And so they are keeping it now. They are, and, and what we're going to see is a little something different from uh, what they did in the early days. Uh, it says, again, on uh, the 14th day of the first month, and that was the month... <laughs> Abib, A B I B, Abib. Uh, we can see that in Leviticus 23 5, Numbers 28 16, Deuteronomy 16, verses 1 and 2. And uh, that name was, it really was the Canaanite name for the first month of the Hebrew religious calendar. Uh, and uh, during the Babylonian captivity, the um, the children of Israel adopted the Babylonian calendar system, uh, and as a result, uh, that month, at least as far as the names were concerned, uh, that the name of that month became Nisan, Nisan, N I S A, uh, Nehemiah chapter two verse one. And verse 20 reads, For the priests and the Levites were purified together, all of them were pure, and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren and the priests for themselves. Now we know what God, the ceremonial uh, uh, and physical cleansing that uh, the priests were to, to do. They were certainly to keep themselves separate from any uh, any dead body and so forth and keep themselves ceremonially clean but they would have washed and they would have put new clean clothes on and then it says and then they killed the Passover for the children of captivity these were the reason it says keep saying the children of captivity these were those who returned from captivity from, from Babylon uh, there were perhaps no, no doubt some others still in the region uh, who had intermarried with uh, other people and ultimately became known as the Samaritans. But these are the captivity, the, these who had returned from captivity. And the difference between what was done then and what was done in days past was the, the head of the house would kill the Passover. You remember the first Passover, uh, each household uh, killed a Passover. They put a, a, a lamb aside. They killed. They ate in haste with 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 bitter herbs and unleavened bread. Uh, and each household had their own Passover. But now the priest is is actually killing a lamb for the people. Uh, and that uh, is believed to have been because of some concern about the uncleanness of the people. Uh, ceremonially, uh, and uh, so the priests began to do that for as as a uh, uh, I'm not gonna I don't want to say symbolic, but they did that to represent 
the, the the entire congregation. We see how this uh, appears to have changed be, uh, during the reign of uh, Hezekiah uh, between 715 and 687 BC and Josiah between 640 and 609 BC uh, where uh, the Levites or priests killed the Passover lamb for the people because of their uncleanness see that in 2nd Chronicles 30 17 um, and the practice uh, of having the Levites or priests kill the Passover had continued uh, in the post exilic times verse 21 and the children of Israel which were come again out of the, out of captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat. So all the captivity again, those who had returned, those who were Israelites who had returned from Babylonian captivity ate, but also it says those such as had separated themselves. Now these are Gentiles who had separated themselves, who had been proselytized, and who had kept the uh, commandment uh, that the men were to be circumcised and they were basically to follow the ordinances or the, 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 uh, the Jewish law, uh, they were allowed to eat the Passover as well. And again, they were to eat it, roasted lamb, uh, seasoned with bitter herbs, and unleavened bread, and uh, and I I'm a little um, little little confused by the fact that the uh, the the priests or Levites are sacrificing the Passover, but we know that they all eat of the Passover, so. Uh, while there may be a ceremonial, there may have been a ceremonial lamb uh, killed uh, for the people. The people must have had their own lambs to eat. Uh, so uh, I've got to do a little more research on that. And then finally, um, verse 22. Verse 22a reads, and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy for the Lord had made them joyful so we know that the Passover celebration is one day following the Passover is the feast of unleavened bread which is is not a a, uh, a feast where it's not a time rather of uh, 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 solemnity or of uh, dread or it's it, it's it's a time of joy it's a joyous time it's a, uh, even though they are eating unleavened bread but it's a joyful time second chronicles 30 21 uh, and and it reminds israel of the ways the lord had has provided for them that feast reminded the people how the lord brought them out of oppression in egypt uh, and for the exiles, this feast now was even more timely and more uh, appropriate. It reminded them of his provision as he brought them out of exile. Now, as he uh, convinced uh, the king, uh, the pharaoh in Egypt to let his people go, even though uh, he changed his mind and he suffered uh, horribly for it uh, with his soldiers drowning in the Red Sea he has turned the hearts of the Persian kings uh, to uh, uh, in favor of his people and caused them to give edicts to not only um, enable them to uh, reconstruct the temple but to provide uh, all the assistance that they needed all the provisions that they needed for that even provisions for the sacrifice so it and it says um, it says for the Lord it says they did this seven days with joy again they're 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 joyful in this celebration they hadn't been able to do this again for uh, scores of years 
uh, in the way that God had prescribed. And, and for the Lord, it says for the Lord, L-O, capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah, the self-existent one, had made them joyful. He had given them this joy. He had restored them to the land. He had made provisions for the reconstruction of the temple, their place of worship and their place of meeting God. He had done all this and they are joyful. They're overjoyed. And part B says, and turn the hearts of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen the hand, the hands rather in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Now, we know that God had turned the hearts of Cyrus. You know, he turned the heart of Darius. And, uh, but it says here, had turned the heart of the king of Assyria. And that took me aback as it did uh, one of the commentators. However, uh, I, I found another commentator, and uh, that's John MacArthur, who basically under, uh, did research and understands that that was a title, the king of Assyria, for all the Persian kings uh, who had uh, ultimately assumed or consumed his empire, the uh, the king of Assyria. So the Persian kings, it, it was a uh, just a ceremonial name. Uh, they were called king of Assyria as uh, as well. So again, this is another reason for the joy that they're experiencing because God had turned the hearts of these Persian kings uh, and enabled the work uh, of the house of God, enabled uh, and actually turned the heart in such that they uh, made all the necessary provisions for the return of the, uh, the re restoration, the re rebuilding of the house of God, the God of Israel. Now we know what that means uh, when it says the God of Israel the the Israel this is from the Israelite perspective but he is the God of of all he is the God the one and only God he is the God that's in control of everything now even though things like things look like they're spinning out of control at an incredible rate but we know God the God of creation is still in control and we thank him for that and we put our trust in him uh, to not allow things go uh, too far. We know that ultimately evil men are going to grow worse and worse, and we know what the, we read the end of the, of the Bible. Uh, we know that uh, this heaven and this earth is going to pass away. Uh, earth is going to melt with fervent heat, but we're not going to be here. We're going to be with him uh, in his very presence, enjoying peace forevermore. So we want to, uh, I think the takeaway from here is to, appreciate um, the celebration uh, that can be experienced, the joy that can be experienced in doing God's will uh, and being in where he wants us to be, doing what he wants us to do and recognizing uh, his provision for us. You know, Psalm 103, there's a verse in Psalm 103 says, this, forget not all of his benefits. Now, never know whether that means don't forget any of them or don't forget all of them. But either way, God wants us to, uh, to the extent we can, to see and recognize his blessings, his abundant provision. Many times we can't, but uh, we can take joy when we, when we know what he's doing. But even when we can't see specifically what he's doing, we can trust that he's doing whatever is best for his children. And we thank him for that. So we can take joy and we can celebrate uh, again being in, in, in his will, in the center of his will, doing those things that are pleasing in his sight and accomplishing things according to his purpose for our life. Not just treading, uh, 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 just treading water or just treading in one place, but accomplishing those things which he has commanded us to do. So we hope that we've... Uh, learned a little more about the, the, the passage we studied today. We ask God's blessing upon you until we such time as we meet again.